Exactly right. And yeah. they lost. They went all in. Uh, let's go ahead. We are 30 minutes in, so why don't we go ahead and start in. This is our NFL draft recap. If you have not watched, Chris explained it the first two days. I'll explain it today. Uh, trying to do a full NFL draft recap for all 32 teams in one 30-minute to an hour show is impossible. So, Chris had a just massively incredible idea to every single day go through a different division. We will go through all four teams from that division and discuss whether we liked or disliked, hated or loved what they did, and we're going to come up with a winner and a loser from the division, and we'll tell you what we like and what we don't like. So, uh, <laughs> Michael said, Chris, can I get an over-under bet on Denver's win total? We'll, uh, we'll get to Denver. We'll get- when, all right, when we get to when we get to the win totals, I'm curious to see what that is. I didn't know that that came out already. I'm very curious to see what those are and and how I think about them right now. We'll uh, now we are only going to just bring them up. We're not obviously going to give out you know what we what we think on this yet. When we finish the draft recap, let's let's then just we'll move do one. That. Yeah, just do a show and just say hey, real early. This is what we like. Yeah, so we'll we'll move into that because obviously all of these like if they shorten the season by any. By any number, all these bets are void anyway. So that's right. It wouldn't matter. But uh, but yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, and dive into this now. We are doing the AFC East today. We got the Patriots, we got the Jets, we got the Dolphins, and we got the Bills. And we're gonna start with Chris's New England Patriots. And you got to tell me, brother. Uh, I, I want you to let me know what you think about this um oh <laughs> michael said no i'm saying let's bet chris you take the under i got the over <laughs> no no i'm not gonna bet the under i bet the <laughs> ask gary nobody had more money that we owe that we have friends of i had so many bets on the broncos over last year and they yeah. let me down because they, all those early games oh, yeah. i was trying to find late wins to get me to push and you got close so we close. got real close. If they don't shit the bed the first four weeks of the season, I'm good. Yes, you are correct. You are correct. Um, all right, so let's let's dive in here to start us off. The New England Patriots. I'm excited to hear your thoughts on this. Well, um, this that, was Groundhog here, let me, Day all over again. Let me let me tell every- you the the win total first, and then let me tell you what the team needs were according to these uh, different websites. Okay, uh, Patriots win total. Right now is set at nine, and what their needs were were linebacker, defensive line, and edge rusher. So they were saying that they needed defensive help. I don't necessarily know that I agreed <laughs> I was about with to say, that. That was that was the best defensive football last year, but okay. Sure. But they they did have some you know they got some guys that are aging. Um, yeah. So if you're wanting to build depth, then yeah. Um, so go ahead, tell me tell me your thoughts here, and then I'll, I'll dive in with what I think. Bill Belichick trading out of the first round, you couldn't even get action on. You just couldn't. Nobody even take that bet because it was guaranteed he's going to make everybody wait up all night. All the Pats fans stay up waiting for our pick right when it gets to the Patriots pick. So I'm selling it. I'm out of here. And then on day two, what does he do? Yeah, he lets his dog make a pick and his dog trained very well by Bill. <laughs> He's going to take some safety nobody's ever heard of from some school that nobody's ever heard of. That would be safety Kyle Duggar from Lenore Ryan. Yeah. This is this is exactly what, what I was expecting, by the way. You this explained is, it multiple times last week. It, uh, it, this that, guy it, is not a great drafter, and he just doesn't care what anybody – his board looks different than everybody else's board in the world. Yes. I kept trying to get people to understand – what if Tua falls and the Patriots get him? What if Tua falls and the Patriots get him? And all I kept thinking of is, you people are insane. You're just making articles up because the Patriots get clicks and Tua gets clicks. And so you're just putting them in the same article because you're lazy writers and you're terrible reporters. Yeah. Shame on you for writing fake stuff because that's what you do. <laughs> that's all you do. Because anybody who knows Bill knows – he ain't moving up to take Tua because no. Bill just wants people to hate his franchise. Well, it's, it, I, I'll tell you this. I, I think a lot of it had to do with uh, he, which, by the way, at the Huddle Report, the Patriots 
dead last in value picks. They did not get value on a single pick that they made. Because Bill, all saying, these, yeah. It, but if you ask Bill, they took guys that are Pats. They took yeah. Patriot guys. And and when I when I look at who they drafted, that's all I see. I see exactly Patriots guys. I mean, they drafted a kicker at one fifty nine. Uh, and they didn't even draft the like consensus best kicker on the board. No, they drafted a guy out of Marshall. And who, I think that's what Bill. I think if everybody else is saying one thing, Bill says the population's wrong. Yeah. Now, I think that is good. Sometimes I think sometimes you can show that you're smarter than everybody by being different. I also think the crowd can't be wrong every time, and. It's a frustrating thing if you want them to go out and get first-round draft picks and big stars for your team. They're just never going to do that. It's yeah. just not going to happen. Uh, McKinnon jumped in. He said, uh, uh, my boy Jarrett Stidham is going to be running the O, baby. I said last year at the draft he's severely underrated, and they yep. steal it where they got him. May not be an all-time great, but definitely capable of keeping them in the game and the hunt for a championship. And Michael said, I, I, I love how he just trolls the NFL with the dog in the chair. Not a fan of his, but i got to give him credit. Oh, no. The, yeah. the dog, I was not expecting the Patriots to be the best meme of, of the draft. I really wasn't. I thought it could happen because Bill does such a good deadpan, and, and we've got so many great Bill memes where Bill's coming to get some busted-up player that nobody wants anymore that's old and aging. Um, it, it, it's great, but I didn't see this coming. The dog and making it look like the dog took a, you know, made the draft pick or whatever. It's just... It's just gr- unbelievable well, great On, t- from on Bill. top of that, it, toss in the fact that he set up his, his laptops at a kitchen table. Like, everybody yeah. else has got these extravagant setups. Oh, You're seeing all this stuff on social there's media. There's no doubt everybody else paid a designer and a decorator to come in and yes. make sure their shot looked right. And and his he just set it up in the corner of the kitchen, and here's my kitchen table. Here's this my, is where I'm going to be Here's sitting. my MacBook. Here you go, Bill. And, and that's it. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Uh, as Let's far as their picks go, Kyle Duggar, uh, you know, obviously we didn't know anything about him. If you say him. you know anything about him, you're lying. Yeah. You're lying. Yeah. Obviously, His mom like, and dad know a lot about him. And His that's coaches know a lot about him. And I, I would, I'd would, i be willing right to bet that the Patriots know a lot about him. Yeah, Bill, Bill probably knows a lot about him. That's yeah. it. That's the list. Uh, Josh Uche, edge rusher out of Michigan. Um, he was... Okay, like he he was fine at Michigan, but he I don't think he ever really stood out. Um, Anthony Jennings at Alabama, you know, I thought he was obviously Alabama kid, but you know, I, I still think they kind of reached for him. Uh, Devin Asiasi from UCLA, tight end. Dalton Keene from Virginia Tech, another tight end. Uh, Justin Rohrwasser from Marshall, the kicker. Uh, Michael Onwenu from Michigan, offensive lineman. Offensive lineman Justin Heron from Wake Forest. They took. Linebacker Cash Malua from Wyoming. And then with their last pick, they got Dustin Woodard, the center from Memphis, who played basically every position in Memphis. And that's yep. what Bill likes. He's he's well, versatile. That, well, I was about to say, that guy's a patriot. That guy's yeah. a patriot because he everything. what is he good at? He's versatile. He can play all five positions on the offensive line. There aren't a lot of people that can play center, yeah. and that's nice. And that, oh, yeah. Bill, Bill said, we'll teach you to play the game. We just need you to be able to play all the positions. Yeah. Um, there's nobody on this that really stands out nope. at all. And nope. and I think this is like the perfect Patriot draft. As far this, as value this goes. The, this is par for the course. You know, give it a dislike, give it a thumbs down, give it a boring, give it a D, give it whatever grade you want to give it. It's exactly what I expected as a Pats fan. Every year I hope for something different. You know, I, I want Santa to be real. He's just not. Yeah, uh, not. draft grade like they they had the lowest amount of value uh, possible for for somebody at the huddle report, but at Pro Football Focus they got a B, and I think I think the B I, did like, Pro Football Focus give anybody a C or worse? Yeah, there were some teams. Uh, did, really? Yeah, because I scrolled through all thirty two and I didn't see it. Let's see. Hold on, I'm I'm trying to find one. Let's see. Uh, C plus was the Texans. So <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, a lot of oh, the Titans, the Titans got a C plus. I don't agree with that, but you know, whatever. Uh, you know, I mean, look, I, 
I think I like what the Patriots did. Like I, you know, I'm not you a Patriots you fan. Like it is 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 irrelevant. We don't know anything about any of these kids. If we think we do, we're wrong. Yeah, and that's the biggest it, thing. It's just one of those deals where we just got to move on. We got to, you know, whatever. I I think I think they took a lot of guys that are uh, that can be developed and and that they're yes. going to have to be. Um, Dalton well, Keene from Virginia if, Tech was was legit. He's a fantastic tight end. Yeah, um, I was about to say no. They they got so and the, and the kid from UCLA. I mean that's a that's a big athletic kid. Yeah. Um, uh, you know they're trying to find another tight end. Um, at least they're they're trying to address that. They didn't address it last year. Um. I I don't know, man. I, I think some of these guys are athletes. A lot of these defensive players come from pedigrees that, that Bill respects and appreciates. And and it's just I don't know. There's nothing sexy or flashy about it. It's boring. I mean, he, Every he took a, he fan took of the world says kid. they dislike the draft. I would dislike the draft, but I'd also don't know that, you know. We don't know what they're gonna turn into. Uh that's he, it. he took a couple of hardball kids, he took a Saban kid. Um he knows that these kids are hard workers, and then you just hope you can get them in and, and develop them into, like, they're moldable. You can get them to be what you, and, you know, it, it's the same thing that you have always said about the Patriots, right? Like, it, they, you're not going to like the draft. You're not going to like what they do. Um, but draft it, it, it's it fun for 31 good. teams. It yeah. really is. It, all 31 teams have a really good time on the draft. Yeah. Except I mean, even for, Giants fans can figure out a way to have a good time on the draft and it, get them and at least make it interesting. Bill, Bill's going to disappoint every year at the draft. You got that right. You have got that right. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one here. Uh, let's see. Michael said they take blue collar, hardworking kids. You can't beat that. Going to work, doing your job isn't sexy, but it is what's needed. True. Yeah, agreed. Oh, it's one of the reasons they win championships over and over and over again. Oh, a hundred percent. Hundred percent. And as soon as one of these blue collar kids want to get paid, Bill says, "Let somebody else pay you." <laughs> yep. And we'll go draft somebody else. We'll go find another guy that nobody's ever heard of. That's uh, that's the way it goes. All right, let's move into the next one. The New York Jets. Their season win total now is up to six and a half. I believe it was six before. They needed offensive line help. They needed edge rush help, and they needed wide receiver help. And they drafted all of those positions within the first three rounds. Uh, not too shabby, really. They got uh, tackle Makai Becton out of Louisville. They got wide receiver Denzel Mims out of Baylor. And uh, so they got safety Ashton Davis out of California, who I think is uh, is pretty pretty freaking good. Um, I mean, that Cal defense was something to behold the last couple yep. of years. And you know uh, who knows how to play. He comes from a really smart coach. Yeah, Wilcox that, is, is that very coach, well respected. That coaches him up, yeah. yeah. Like that's, I, I, I get real biased when it comes from – it's hard for me to take a – a defensive kid that's not a star stud. We've seen the elite athletes come from non-defensive schools, okay? But it's hard for me to take that second-tier, third-tier defensive kid from schools where the head coach or the defensive coordinator isn't just a just a defensive mind that we all trust and appreciate. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, along with that, they got edge rusher Jabari Zaniga out of Florida. They got, got a uh, couple of athletes from Florida. Yeah, they got uh, LaMichael P. Ryan out of Florida. They got quarterback James Morgan out of Florida International in the fourth round. Now, let me let me go ahead and hit on him. A lot of people really high on him. If this were any other organization that was not completely tied to their quarterback, I think you could see a situation where Morgan could eventually beat out Sam Darnold for that starting quarterback position. I think Morgan is an absolute stud. I think he is a legit quarterback. Uh, the last two years under Butch Davis, he was fantastic. I think uh, I think he's great. I don't think he's going to get a fair shake for the next few years, um, and and that's kind of what sucks. Is like they're going no, to go. The one all good in thing he's got going for him is the GM nor the head coach aren't the guys that drafted Darnold. That's true, and I mean I could be completely wrong on this. I, I mean, I'm gonna I mean, tell you that that's the best benefit is like like a young quarterback or another quarterback coming in to help Trubisky doesn't help a lot because the GM and the coach are the ones that drafted him. Yeah, they're they're married to him and they know their success is tied to him. I just wonder the if people the owners... in New York are not, and if Sam don't got it, are they going to yank him for somebody that they think's got it? I think competition is good. Yes. Okay. I get, I get, let me go on a tangent for a second here. Go ahead. I, 
I get crapped on by a lot of my Browns fans for like wanting competition for Baker Mayfield. And my argument is this doesn't make any sense that you don't want competition. Wouldn't you want the best? Like you're so married to this pick and this guy being a star, but isn't it better for the team if the best guy, if somebody comes in and beats him out in practice and beats him out in training camp and wins the job, isn't it more important that the better player have the job, not the most deserving because of where he was drafted and what the team invested in? Isn't it, isn't it better for you, the fan, to have the best guy playing? Yes. Because I just had the same argument on draft night when Jake Fromm went to the Bills, got a couple of Bills fan friends, and I was like, dude, I think – I'm not saying Fromm is going to beat out uh, Josh Allen, but I think it's a 50-50 chance that that Fromm could be a better quarterback than Josh Allen and win that job. And they all got mad at me, and I just said, isn't it – I don't get that you being mad that – what if this guy takes y'all to the next level and wins the Super Bowl with you? Like, yeah, or, are you or mad just, then? Or gets you, are you out pissed of the first off round. then? You know, like, or wins a playoff game. Yeah. I mean, uh, Patriot fan. there were a sec of Patriot fans that were pissed off when Drew Brees got healthy that Bill didn't give him the job back. Are and they, they were they, like, you can't lose your job to injury, man. Like, it's not cool. Like, he's the guy that we got paid. Yes, he was the star. And nobody knew Tommy, and nobody cared about Tommy. And them, Tom won the Super Bowl, and it's all over. It's all over for Bledsoe, yeah. I'm with but you. you. But but it was better for the franchise for them. To, look, Bill saw it. Just trust the coaches and let it be a real competition. That's all I want is competition. Yes. My biggest problem with the Browns is it's not – Baker runs his yak a lot, and I get frustrated with that. My issue is simply he wants the job given to him. Yeah. And I don't think anybody should have their job given to him. I think somebody should constantly be behind them pushing them. Well, I think that James Morgan is is the type of quarterback that will push for that job, and uh, I kind of think Gase will will, will give him an opportunity. That. I mean, I mean, I, like last year was crazy for Gase, <sighs> and and yet, I mean, they still won what seven games last year? They won seven games. They had to do what six games without Sam, four games without Sam. Yeah, yeah, and and my God, it was a disaster. Oh uh, no, it was it was awful. But but to be fair, they didn't have anybody backing him up either. So no. you know. well, the backup wasn't bad. I was a boy from Northwestern, but and he he gets hurt in like the third quarter of the first game against the Browns, yeah. and then they go to the third string quarterback, and now it's nobody's three deep at quarterback. Who was that? Was that Luke Falk? No, it was uh, Simeon, Trevor Simeon. Well, it, Simeon, yeah, but the the third string, I thought. Oh, was, who the third stringer was? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I thought I, I thought it was Luke Falk, and he ended up getting cut like almost. I mean, I'm, as soon I'm as sure, as soon as Sam got back, they're yeah. like, "You hit the bricks." Yeah, it was it was pretty pretty ridiculous. Uh, let's go through the rest of these picks here. Offensive tackle Cameron Clark out of Charlotte, uh, cornerback Bryce Hall from Virginia, who I think is a stud. Uh, cannot believe that they got him in the fifth round, and uh, punter Braden Mann out of Texas A and M. Now that might be their best pick of this entire draft because Braden Mann was a friggin' beast as a punter. Uh, Everybody but, in this division drafted a player that I don't think needs to be drafted in drafts. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Um, it kind of drives me insane. Yeah, I mean, Braden Man is is legit. Uh, who? Somebody else said that. Um, I thought somebody said it in the in the chat. Maybe not. But yeah, Braden Man so, is is. So legit. let me let, let's let's analyze this. Okay, you named off all the players. That's great. Let's 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 yeah. get down to the nuts and bolts of it. All right. Uh, Makai Becton. I, I've told you my thoughts on him. I would stay away from him. I didn't. I, he was I, without I, question in both of our minds the fourth best tackle out of all these yeah. big offensive linemen. He's, right? he's obviously the, massive, and and if you can develop him correctly, then yeah. yes, he's got all the tools that you need. Uh, but you know, I he never really stood like he was the best lineman that Louisville had last year. But Louisville's line he played was two trash. games his entire career against NFL talent. Yeah, and wasn't wasn't very good. And that's, that's it. He was tested twice in his entire career, and both times he failed those tests. And you know me. We've had this conversation. The PED scare coming out of college is real simply because I now don't know how much of your production is fabricated. Yeah. If you cheated on the test, I'm morally opposed to it, but I now don't know how to grade you. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, wide receiver Denzel Mims in the second round. So I have an opinion about this. Hey, go ahead, go ahead. I, I, I'll toss mine back out there because I said it last week. It's 
I like Mims. I like Mims a lot. I was very adamant before this draft happened that I think this is going to be an excellent draft for the receivers. I don't want to see any of them go to New York because that is a place where I don't think any of them can succeed. I, I think like I, I want to trust Gase. I think that if he can get the right I, I, quarterback in there, or, or at least get the the quarterback playing well, whoever it is, then I think obviously your wide receivers are going to benefit from that. But uh, Denzel Mims had had the dropsies a lot last year, and and. And not just last year. I mean, just over his career. And and I don't know that he's really developed in that area. He has got all the tools that you would need other than that. He's big. He's fast. He's a, a pretty legitimate route runner from what, I, you know, from what I've seen. Yeah. And you and I have watched Baylor a lot. A lot. You know? a, a lot. A whole lot. So, I, it, I... For where they got him, I mean, they got him at pick 59. So oh, I think yeah, no, he felt, I yeah. I wanted to see him go to another team, almost any other franchise. I just don't trust this organization. He he will take over uh for Robbie Anderson, and I, I think he will be a day one starter. Um but he he's well, yes, got some he's, more to he's do. now instantly the number one receiver. Not a lot of these rookies are going into their teams being the number one receiver. Yeah, and, and he will be. So he will be. Not just the number one, there ain't a number two. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, <laughs> Michael said Gase looked grumpy as hell during the draft. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I th- he put his kids around him, and it made it look even weirder to me. It was, was, it was strange. Like, I, before, you were just this creepy old guy, and now you've got your kids around you, and it's just like it didn't soften you up at all. No, it really didn't. It really it did, didn't. It, like, you still look weird to me. Yeah, I mean, this it is coming was, from a guy that looks weird. Okay, I'm okay with that. But yeah, and so it's, as as far as their as far as their needs go, uh, they they drafted for their needs. They and, addressed their needs with yeah. the picks they took. I don't know that I really like the picks they took though. I and I, I'm in the same boat that you are. I just I I don't know. You know, I think they got some value at at some of the picks. Um, yeah, no, they they absolutely did. I mean, I'll tell you this: if the quarterback turns out to be their quarterback, and and he ends up being half decent and winning the job and becoming a starter in the NFL, that's hard to hate. But that's yeah. a that's, that's a big a reach. Big, that's a big if, man. Yeah, that's a that's a massive if. And the same thing with Beckton, right? Like Beckton, with as big as he is and everything, if he turns out to be a legitimate tackle, then yeah, you got him at the eleventh pick, like the fourth the, tackle taken the, in the draft, the, like but here's the third here's or whatever the thing. it is. Here's the thing, all right? The the Texans had this problem last year, and they're going to have it again this year, by the way, of having one great tackle is awesome. When the rest of your offensive line sucks, it really doesn't matter. Now you, yeah, it, you it, the, the offensive line didn't get any better when when what's his ass went to went to Houston. Okay. Well, it, look, I'll say this: like they had two rookies starting last year. Like they, but, you know, the Texans. I, I think the Texans can improve. Hey, I'm not saying the Texas can't improve. I'm saying yeah. that adding him to a bad offensive line didn't make them better. No, they that's, were that's still bad. Yeah. If Beckton is the goods, is the rest of the Jets' offensive line good? And does that make them good? Like, it's a step in making them good. Like, you got to yeah. get a free agent, and you got to draft another one next year, and you got to – like, offensive line is one of the hardest pieces to build because one great pl- – you can get a great edge rusher, and he can make a front seven look awesome. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You can have the best tackle in the world, best guard in the world. If the other four pieces are crap, your quarterback is still going to get hurt. Yeah, you're you're right. You're right. Um, now, I yeah. don't know that the Jets' offense is bad, by the way. I, I haven't paid attention to their offensive line enough to care this early in the game. I'm going to tell you this. Their offense is shit. And if their offensive line was really good and the rest of their offense was that bad – there's no fixing that. No, you're, <laughs> There's no fixing that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, let Let's go with whether or not we like it. I, I I'm gonna. I, th- if there was a neutral feeling, and that's this is kinda, not a hatred for any of these teams. Let, let's 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 toss that in there. Let's let's make it neutral. If we because I, I, I really feel like I just put my hand in lukewarm water to where I don't know that my hand is in water. <laughs> I I don't like it, but I don't hate it. Like I, I could see it working no, out really I, well. I don't hate it. I, I like some of the players. 
I, the, the, uh, the 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 kid from Florida, the edge rush from Florida. Like, I think that guy's going to be good. Yeah. You know, I, th- I think Mims has the goods, but I think he's going to be a bust because I said, this is my biases coming out in the yeah. grade. Any of these receivers are bust. I thought these, I thought this receiving class was going to be bust proof unless one of them went to the Jets. And then that guy's going to be the bust. Their, their first two picks are projects. Um, that have so. all of that's, the tools. That's hang on. That's a hard pill to swallow, though. Yeah. You're a bad football team. In the first two picks, you kind of need to be guys that you hit on. Projects are not hit on. Projects are yeah. Maybe we'll finish in a month. Maybe it takes six months. I don't know when this damn room's going to be done. Yeah. Maybe maybe it could take you know two seasons for them. I mean, we, who knows? We so. may never finish the bathroom and, and we if just it takes, sell the house as is. I'll say this. If it takes two seasons for Denzel Mims to become a good wide receiver and two but, seasons for Makai Becton to become a good offensive lineman, Gase will not be there to reap the benefits. I, absolutely. If it takes two seasons, then they're then they didn't they weren't good. Yeah. So it is the, it the is modern NBA, it is. NBA NFL is it's just different. It's yeah. different now. No, you're you're 100 right. Let's right. get off them. Let's uh let's move on. Let's go ahead. I like these other two. Let's talk about the Miami Dolphins. Okay. Six wins. They needed quarterback, safety, and offensive line help. Um, I, a lot of draft capital too. So yeah, a ton. Uh, yeah. just a ton. Um, I, all right. So let's let's kind of roll through these picks really quickly. Uh, they got Tua Tagovailoa, quarterback at number five. At number eighteen, they got Austin Jackson out of USC. I thought that was a little high. Uh, they got Noah, but they needed the tackle. I don't think they could trade back. No, no. I, I think I think Austin Jackson could be good. I think he could I be. I think he right. was the best tackle left on the board, and they needed a tackle, and they couldn't trade back. Yeah. Uh, cornerback, they got Noah Igbenogni from yep. Auburn, um, mm-hmm. who was, I he was he was fine. I guess. I thought he was good. I thought he, he had a good year. It was, yeah, but it was a bit of a reach to take him in the first round. I mean, it was just, it was a little crazy. Um, but, I mean, you know. That's just Gary hating on Auburn. No, no, no. This is, like, nobody else had him projected to be a first-round pick. Like, he, yeah, Okay, that's fine. I mean, it, it, let's see. At the Huddle Report, he was uh, he was ranked number 54 on their board. Like, he was nowhere close but to being But that's the a Huddle Report, right? I, Agreed, agreed. Where, where was the kid from Bill Belichick's draft? I, it, Projected. Oh, Belichick. 180th? 500th? Yeah, but the Patriots had, like, the worst value of any team but, okay. on the— But that it, doesn't mean it's wrong. I, agreed. I understand. I just—I thought it was a little bit of a reach to go there. But if they really like him, then I don't see—you know, I, I could see him being good. They wanted so, a cornerback that faced up against some of the best wide receivers in the history of college football. And they, This yeah. kid did that. Yeah, he certainly did. He certainly okay. did. We at least know this. These DBs taken out of the SEC, especially the SEC West this year. They've all been tested. They, they were all at least tested. Okay. Yes. This wasn't Becton who had two games against real talent. All right. Yeah. And and the kid on top of that had to had to go against AJ Brown and DK Metcalf last year, who both ended up being stud wide receivers in the NFL in yeah. the first season. I'm, I'm I'm just telling you, I think he's way better than you're giving him credit for. I, I like their draft. I like their draft a lot. Oh no, I, I I do as well. And obviously we'll get to, you know, like, dislike, love, hate, whatever. Uh, interior offensive lineman Robert Hunt out of Louisiana, uh, you know, UL Lafayette, whatever you want to call him. Uh, they took Raquan Davis from Alabama in the second round. They got safety Brandon Jones out of Texas, who, when he was healthy, was great. Uh, interior offensive lineman Solomon Kindley out of Georgia. That's another massive dude. Uh, Just big body. Yeah, they got uh, Jason Stobridge out of North Carolina. They got edge rusher Curtis Weaver out of Boise State, who was an insane value pick. Uh, in, this in kid the fifth fell, round. but do you think it's just Boise wasn't typical Boise dominant? No, I think I think you know, there had the to be small some schools. There had to be something else going on. There, there had to be something else. Like I, I don't know what it is. Like I haven't seen the reports. See the Boise players get taken the way we usually do. But not that they have ten or twelve, but they usually have two or three that get drafted. But they get drafted pretty early. Let's see on the on the PFF big board. Uh, Curtis Weaver was the twenty sixth best prospect, and. They got him at the, let's see, 164th pick. Yeah. So there was something else going on there. I don't know. What something, something's weird here. I yeah. thought that was a steal. I just thought, holy shit, man. Yeah. I mean, he's an incredible pass rusher, and and they needed some help with that as well. Yep. Um, you know, on top I of that, I uh, am a toy is what I thought. So they they got they got Malcolm Perry in the seventh round, uh, quarterback out of Malcolm or out of uh, out of Navy. Navy. 
Yeah, who, who, I love that pick too. Versatility, baby. Oh, yes, he can be a running back. He can be a wide receiver. He can be. He they can have be him as quarterback slash wide receiver, um, and and I think he's going to do a lot. I think he's going to line up in all of them. I I agree a hundred percent. Now, their sixth round pick. This is the one that drives you crazy. I don't. I just don't understand. I don't. Blake Ferguson I don't get, out of LSU. Yeah, my, this is my boy. Long he got snapper. LSU to fourteen. It was a little bittersweet for me because I just don't understand this. Why would you draft a long snapper? I don't I don't even know what makes a long snapper a good long snapper. I uh <laughs> here's here's my here's my argument, okay? Here's my argument. You've heard this conversation at least three times already, Gary. Yeah. Because you have to listen to me talk all the time. I'll put it out there to the ethos. There are thirty two long snappers in the NFL. That's the list. Yeah, there's, there's no Nobody backup. has a backup. There are 32 of them. They usually play for a decade or two, all right? They can last a long time. That means there are 32 human beings in the whole world that do this. I promise you, you can go find somebody who's one of those 32 to do it for the league minimum of now 300 and something thousand dollars a year, Okay. I don't understand why you would spend a draft pick and you say, oh, well, it's a six-round draft pick. That doesn't matter. Um, let me interest you on a guy that got taken two picks later to the Brownies. Donovan Peoples-Jones is the ultimate dynamite flyer, I believe. This yeah. guy had a second or third-round draft grade. Uh, and he fell. You can talk about the greatest quarterback of all time. Well, well Tom is, is that, but that's hard to – that's shooting. I understand. I'm not saying that you need to be shooting you for a Hall of Famer. On, you're this. at least swinging the bat. You're at least taking exactly. the bite at the apple to see, is this the best apple you've ever had? Right. When you get the long snapper, if he is the greatest long snapper in the history of the NFL, people will still not know his name. How equate to wins? That, it, it won't. It won't. The, the margin of difference between number one and number 32 has to be this. Yeah. Uh, McKinnon jumped in on the on the chat. He said, Dolphins absolutely killed this draft. Flores is building something up. I'm actually pretty excited to see. Michael Me said, too. Michael I, just, said uh, I don't understand. Listen, had oh, they yeah. taken Thaddeus Moss right here, I would. This would be the first, first team that I would say, love, love, love. Take a <laughs> swing on a kid that was injured, and that's the only reason he fell. Yeah. He had a hell it. of a draft, draft grade. Realized he had foot surgery, and nobody wanted to touch him. Swing at him. And if he's a bust, Throw him away because he was a six round pick and pay this guy three hundred grand. Call him and say we really want you to come. Uh, Chris's favorite long snapper got picked up. Uh, Michael jumped in with that, and then he said Malcolm Perry was a Bill type pick. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, oh, and, and that's oh, what Brian oh, Malcolm Doors Perry. Is. I'm sorry. Yeah, Mal- sorry right. No, Malcolm yeah, Perry. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt that Bill had that name circled on his board, and he was waiting till to the last pick to take them. No, yep. no, no doubt. Everyone keeps bitching that I'm not drafting a quarterback. I'll draft a quarterback, you sons of bitches. <laughs> Take a guy, put him a wide receiver. And that's Brian Flores out of that Bill Belichick tree. He saw him, and he Julian was Julian Edelman. Julian Edelman played quarterback for Kent State. Yep, exactly. He's thrown five passes for the Patriots. Yeah, all of them touchdowns. Believe that. Boom. Do what you got to do. I, uh, I honestly love what they did in the draft. I thought it was I great. Too. I, 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 I agree with McKenna, man. I, but I. I like Brian Flores. I think Brian Flores is the first guy out of the Belichick tree that actually, and I was worried because I thought he had potential and I thought they forced him taking a job too soon. I didn't know that he'd be ready because he only ran the D. He wasn't even officially the defensive coordinator, yeah. but he had only been running the defense for one year. Other than that, he was a position coach. I, I really didn't think, have experience. I think that this organization has turned a new leaf. They have obviously yeah, changed over quite a bit. This looks like a well-run franchise right now. Uh, and obviously, the only thing that we've seen is what they did last year, and they didn't They didn't tank last year. They went out and they with, with the guys that they had. With bums. With bums. They won, what, five games? I mean, yes, and they fought hard in game. The games that they lost towards the end, after the first couple of games where they got the shit kicked out of them, yeah. and people thought tanking for Tua and it's over because they were just getting housed it by everybody. They turned around and they were in dog fights, man. They they won at the Patriots in a game that the Pats had to have for one, and two, them winning actually hurt them in the draft. They didn't care. 
They didn't get. They wanted those guys to win. Fought like hell for Brian Flores. I'm yeah. I'm excited to watch this team, just because I I want good things for Flores. I really really do. Yeah, I I agree with you. All right, uh, we're already an hour plus deep into this. Let's go ahead and move into the Bills. Ah, the Buffalo Bills needed an edge rusher. They needed wide receiver. They needed a running back, which I think they just needed one, uh, running back depth more so than anything. Uh, their over-under right now is eight and a half wins for the regular season win total. I, so, you know what, how about, do you want to start off or you want me to just go through the picks? Because they didn't have a ton of them. Are you going to go through the, if you're going to go through all the picks, just do let's, that real let's quick. Let's just go ahead and roll through that. They, edge rusher, AJ Epinesa, they got at 54. He was second round pick out of Iowa. Uh, I think that was a steal. Um, his, his combine numbers hurt him, but... We'll just run through the picks, and yeah. then we'll, then we'll uh, ask him. Running back Zach Moss out of Utah. Wide receiver Gabriel Davis out of UCF was a fourth-round pick. Fifth round, they took Jake Fromm, quarterback out of Georgia. Sixth round, kicker Tyler Bass out of Georgia Southern. Round six, they got uh, wide receiver Isaiah Hodgins out of Oregon State. And round seven, cornerback Dane Jackson out of Pittsburgh. Um, all in all, I I liked what they did here. Um you you think very high. Let's let's go ahead and talk about the highest profile guy, which would be Jake Fromm. His biggest issue is he has got tiny hands, right? And and while that's not that big of an issue at Georgia, when you're playing in Buffalo in the cold, that could be a problem. So, I I'm not as high on him in this situation. Although I could still see him being a better quarterback than Josh Allen. Uh, I don't think he's great. I don't think he's got any of the measurables that would make you think that he's a fantastic quarterback. But one thing he does have that Josh Allen does not is he does not turn the football over. So, you know. Here's I, what I want from my quarterback from the Buffalo Bills. Okay. I think the Buffalo Bills could easily be. Here's the thing. Here's what I need from the quarterback. I need him to be Brad Johnson. I need him to be Trent Dilfer. Yeah. Don't turn the football over. Don't lose the football game. Make one or two plays in the whole game. That's it. Yeah. That's it. I don't need you to run a two-minute offense every drive every year and, and, and win the game, all right? What makes what makes Tom great is the fact that he stresses you out 80% of the game, but you know he's coming back, Yeah. okay? Peyton Manning had that about. Like, they didn't kick the shit out of a lot of people, but they were never out of it. Atlanta, looking at you. Um, <laughs> I think the Bills are a really good football team from top to bottom. Sean McDermott they need is a, a trigger man. He's an incredible that coach. Just won't lose the football game. Yeah. Uh, McKinnon jumped in. This is about the Dolphins, by the way. I was at the Chiefs game when the Dolphins beat the Pats, and the whole stadium started chanting, Let's go, Dolphins, and yelling, Fitz Magic. He said it was nuts. Uh, hell, there's a petition going around for him to come beat the drum in Kansas City during one of the games this year. Which would be hilarious if, if that actually happened. Because, <laughs> hey, the Chiefs needed that to be able to get the number two seed. I know. I mean, I know. If, if they if the Pats win that game, you got to wonder, do the Chiefs even make the Super Bowl? I mean, obviously, it's changes. all revisionist history. A lot of changes. Well, yeah, so, anyway, we go back. But, yeah. Um, I like this pick, though. I like I, so we'll go down. I like Epinesa a lot. Yeah. So first, his measurable. Where like, was it? Oh, it, it was getting Stefan Diggs. Yeah. Hell yeah, of they, a first round pick. Yeah, they they did um, all right. And yeah, pretty good. I like Zach Moss a lot. Yeah. A lot. Agreed. You made me watch a lot of Utah football last year, way more than I wanted to. <laughs> and listen, this Moss guy was is good. The biggest. This guy was the biggest thing the offense had. Oh, he was he was about the only thing. I, I think the quarterback, yeah. Tyler Huntley, like he's not uh, undrafted free agent. I forget where he went now, but nah. there's a chance he could make a roster. Uh, but but Moss was was the offense. Moss was the offense. Yeah. Moss was the offense. This kid's good. And they already have a really good running game. The fact they needed running backs. That's somebody who's been watching the Patriots play a lot and thinks yeah. you got to have seven of them or you can't win. Yeah. Um, Gabriel and, Davis and then, from Central Florida. And then Gabriel Davis, I Fast. thought – Fast. This dude has played in meaningful football games in college football. Oh, we we have seen him numerous times at Central, and he can fly. Yes. He can take the yes. top off the defense easily. So, and yeah, then I, I love the Jake Fromm pick because I think you're going to know is Fromm the guy or not. Pretty, I just want competition. At least yeah. now, Josh Allen has to show up for work and know, I got to go. 
I got to go. If I play like I played against Houston in that playoff game, yes, it was a playoff game. So the fact that we made the playoffs is a good thing. If I play like that, I'm going to lose my job because there's somebody behind me. And last year there was a no name behind me. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think about the kicker here? Because uh, we talked I hate, about this. I hate, I hate the idea. All four of these teams wasted a draft pick when they could have taken somebody to swing a fence at. Okay. They yeah. just could have. It, uh, I want to swing the bat. Tyler Bass was the second ranked kicker out of college last year. Um, the first one was Rodrigo Blankenship, and did did Rodrigo even get drafted? Who did he? Nope. Get? Which is crazy. Rodrigo was not the first. Everybody that had a draft board that I was watching the draft go through had had this guy as number one and the Patriots kicker number two. That's interesting. That is that's very interesting. That's I'm trying. Blankenship to wasn't the top. He was the third, I think. But he went to Georgia. These other two kids went to small schools. We know him because he played at Georgia. Yeah. And he, I mean, that's not to say that Rodrigo can't kick, but Tyler Bass was. Most kickers don't get drafted. I bet a lot of Georgia Southern games last year. Uh, so you know that, that I, I saw him kick multiple times. I don't know that I ever saw him miss a kick. Like, I, I don't think I ever saw him miss. And he, I mean, he killed the ball. The, the dude fine. killed it. But he, I, I still don't know that he's worth a six round pick. My my problem with taking a kicker from Georgia Southern is, is show me a high pressure situation where he actually had to kick the ball, okay? Because they didn't play in a single game where there was eighty thousand people at, and every eye on the TV was white. At least Blankenship had that. All that's, right? it, that's true. Blankenship had to nut up and go kick the football in big, meaningful football games, to where if he misses, it costs his team a game, and he's the reason they lost the South Carolina game. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Uh, at least he's got experience doing that. Yeah. Uh, the last two picks that they had: wide receiver Isaiah Hodgins out of Oregon State and cornerback Dane Jones, or sorry, Dane Jackson out of Pittsburgh. Um, those are the two kind of flyers that you would like to see a team. This is biting now. I don't know anything about these guys, but you're just biting. You're just taking you, a swing, man. You're you happy. and I, you and I watched Hodgins uh, in the first game of the year. We were sitting at Hollywood Casino. Watching Oklahoma State and Oregon State, and and the kid was lighting it up. Uh, yep. in in that offense, in Jonathan Smith's offense at Oregon State, he was legit. However, that's one of those kind of air raid offenses. You don't. He doesn't have all the measurables. He's not like a, a massive guy. He's not the fastest guy in the world, but he's a legit receiver. Like you know, he can catch the ball. You know, he can get the ball in the end zone. Um, yeah, and then same thing. Look, Dane Dane Jackson out of Pittsburgh. Like you know, he's coming from a good defensive scheme. You know that he he can uh, he can handle excuse me complex defenses because I mean that's exactly so what want, they do there. I want an athlete Narduzzi that, runs a complex that measures team. well and might be smart and and we can just try it and maybe maybe they're the next star and maybe they're not but I, but it's worth a the, shot yeah if you're the best kicker in the in the history of the game okay that's that's fantastic you're still not worth if the your top team two, eight, is not good picks. enough to be in meaningful games where you have to make meaningful kicks then nobody knows your name yeah I mean if Steve Gaskowski or 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 um, Adam Vinatieri went to Detroit instead of the Patriots nobody knows his name he'd be the greatest kicker in the world nobody knows his name nobody cares yeah you're right because you're not kicking in meaningful games. Uh, Michael jumps in. Uh, well, before we answer his question, um, I I like what the Bills did here. Oh, I do, I do too. I, I think I'm, they I'm, had. It was a but I like this trip. front office, and I have for the last couple of years. I told yeah. you that it, they they have. I didn't like the improved. Josh Allen pick, but I've liked everything else, and I like the way they build the team. Yeah, I I agree. So with that, uh, winner and loser. Um, I think the Pats were the loser. Yeah, I think so too. I I think I like. I think I like what the Dolphins did more than the Bills. I would too. I'd uh, say they, that. Well, they, they had, had a lot more picks. That's to what do I was going to say. They and had, that's, that's the other thing is it's hard to it's hard to parse out the fact they they got a lot, but they had a lot to get. Yeah, they they certainly did, and I mean they they gave up a lot to get those picks. They wanted draft capital, they got it. So, um, Michael ended up, and we'll close out with this: Are the Pats the favorite to win that division? If not, who? I would have to say you you have to favor them. The last I saw, 
and I don't remember when I looked they, at this. They are because the Pats have – It was minus 120. It was the lowest odds they've ever been. It's basically yeah. a, an even bet right now. Well, it's, the, the win total for the Pats is nine. The win total for the Bills is eight and a half. Um, so if you just go based on that, like if you're, if you're going Vegas, yeah, the Pats are the favorite. Uh, are they our favorite to win the division? Yeah, I think so. Until somebody knocks Bill off, I mean, what did they want it? Fourteen straight years, something like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the truth, and this is the fact of it. Show me a quarterback because this division has just printed crap when it comes to the quarterback position. Josh Allen's not winning this division over Bill Belichick. I don't care who our quarterback is. I, I think he's probably find a right. defense to make that kid look stupid every week. Yeah, it, look, it, the Dolphins got Tua. I, he ain't ready this year, so. You know, I mean, it, he could eventually uh, move into that. I believe it when but, I see it because, once again, I've, yeah. I've, I've seen great quarterbacks. Be t- Everybody said Sam Darnold was going to be the guy. Right? Uh, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Keep, keep bringing him on. And, and it's not who's playing quarterback for the Patriots anymore. It's Bill Belichick's going to make your guy look stupid. Yes. He I makes mean, really good quarterbacks look stupid. It, mediocre it's, sometimes. It's, it's where, right? yeah, it's where the, uh, it's where that whole thing, the the Sam Darnold meme came from. Like I'm seeing ghosts. Yes. Same thing. Yes. He uh, made a professional athlete admit on the sidelines, I don't even know what I'm looking at. It's that complicated. Yeah. What they throw at you. I'm not smart enough to watch it and be able to explain it or break it down. I've just watched the results for 20 years. Yeah. Michael uh, jumped in. He said, "I take Buffalo, Miami, Pats, Jets finish." Uh, I mean, I, I just, I, I don't buy that. If you would bet Miami to win the division this year over the Patriots, you're not paying attention to football. Yeah, it's they're they're not ready yet. They're, they're still a long way away. I, I, I want Miami to get better. I like Flores a lot. Can they win a game? Sure. Can they win the division? And once again, show me a quarterback that can go in New England and consistently win. I, I don't, I hadn't seen it. I'm not going to say that I expect it anytime soon. So, there you go. I think it'll be the Pats for now. Um, I think let's go wrap it up. Anything else we need to hit? So, Michael said, thanks, fellas. Great chatting with you. We appreciate it, Michael. Thank you for hopping in. Everybody else that jumped in on the chat, we appreciate you as well. You guys have been fantastic. Um, I think that's going to wrap. Is there anything else we need to hit? Nope. Is it? That, That works for me. All right, you guys know what to do. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Make sure you subscribe at any of the locations at which you can subscribe. If not, go over to winningcureseverything.com. It's got everything over there for you. And uh, and you can make sure and leave nice reviews on your podcast apps or whatever the video platforms are that you are watching on. We definitely appreciate that. All you guys that chatted, make sure you share out the show with your buddies. Tell everybody you know about it. We would love to see the numbers continue to grow, and they uh, they have done so over the past few months uh, while we were in this quarantine for sure. Thank you all for jumping in. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And we will uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for checking out.